pray for me as I speak God's word. Amen? Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be here. Lord, send your double portion of the Holy Spirit to guide me as I speak your word. We ask you all these things. Just let me do pray. Amen. Amen. So as you can see the screen today, the title will be God's Love. What was the title? God's Love. Okay. Let's go to this next slide, please. I'm going to read the statistics. Nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. During one year, this is equated to more than 10 million women and men. So there's a lot of domestic abuse that's going on in America today. Another one, almost half a female, 46%, and male, 44%, victims of rape in the United States were raped by an acquaintance. Of these, 45% of female rape victims and 2%, 29% of male rape victims were raped by an intimate partner. So there's a lot of raping involved as well in relationships. Next slide. National survey reveals 62% of kids think parents are too distracted to listen. Most kids report feeling excited or happy as they head out to school in the morning than to be at home. So there's a lot of kids that can't wait to leave home and stay away from home and then start to come back home, unfortunately. And from the American Association, about 40 to 50% of married couples end in divorce. Is that a high percentage? Yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> and if it's the spirit of prophecy, it said less than 1% of marriages are happy. You know how, how much that is? <laughs> in other words, more than 99% of marriages are unhappy. All right? Is it that uh, a raising concern? Yes. It is. Now, who can tell me what love is? Anybody from the crowd? What is love? Okay, we know that. Uh, what, what else? What, what, what is, I need, I need a definition. Love is a principle, okay. Who else? Harry? Huh? Harry? Oh, Harry, my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, last one in the room. Okay, then, then, go ahead. Say that one time. Okay, connection between two people. Okay, that's true. Love is unconditional. Love is unconditional. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right. So, for, fortunately, we, the Bible actually defines what love is. So we're going to go to our first scripture, 1 Corinthians 13. Let's go to the next slide. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. If you find it, say amen. I read it from the screen. I gave them 10, give you guys 10 seconds. This is based on the New King James. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Amen? Amen? But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. And 1 John 4 verse 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Amen? Amen. I think I heard someone say that. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. In other words, is it possible for us to have love if you don't have God? No. no. Can I love someone without having a relationship with God? You guys said no. Now, before I get into depth in that, I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe different type of love. I'm going to describe four types of love. Let's go to the next slide. So there's a love called storage. Say storage with me. Storage. Storage. Philia. Philia. Eros. Eros. I hope I said that right. And agape. Agape. You guys say it like that. Agape. Agape. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> now. <laughs> we, all right, that's it. All right. <laughs> so we're going to define the first thing. Philia. Next. Philia means close friendship of brotherly love and greed. So that's what philia love is. Close friendship. Like me, Eric, your boys, this is the type of love we got. Okay? 
Let's call it but mostly brotherly love. Right? Right. Let's go to our first verse. First Peter 3 verse 8. Someone please read that for me. First Peter 3 verse 8. Any volunteers? First Peter 3 verses 8. Who's going to read it? You going to read it? Yes, sir. Oh. We are all of one mind, having compassion one of others. Love is brethren, be gentle, be courteous. Okay. And you can read um, Romans 12 verse 10. The one that just stood up. Where, where, where'd you go? What are you looking for, right? Romans 12 verse 10. The one that just stood up. Go ahead. Okay, let me ask you a question. If I were to have, a, let's say, a filial love to my wife, would there be a problem? No. I'm hearing no. mixed answer. No. If I were to give a filial love to my wife, would there be a problem? No. Okay, let me repeat the question. Let's just say it was just for little love that I give to my wife. No, that's it. In that's itself. Is that a problem? Yes. Okay. Why is that a problem? One, one person, one person at a time. Go ahead, Eric. You, you're yes with the last one. Come on. <laughs> because that's your wife's love. You can have a love for her. Okay. So it's... Connection. Though, there wouldn't be, there would be a lack of affection, basically. Correct? Yeah. And I hear what's up, and then I just we just sleep in different beds, and it will not be good. <laughs> so there won't be no love between the husband and wife. So this is what for love means. We're gonna fast forward. We're gonna go to the next slide. Storage love. Storage is family love. The bond. Oh, I'm gonna test on this by the way. Storage is family love. The bond among the mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters, sisters, and brothers. So basically, a family. What is test? What is Exodus 20 verse 12 said? All right, that fire. Good stuff. That die what? That thy days may be long upon the long. Give it. Okay, good, good, good. Let's go to our next verse. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Anybody? And yea, Father, for both not your children to God, but bring them up in the nurture and. Believe it or not, there are some parents that like to get their kids angry, yes. which is not good. <laughs> which is not good. And the Bible said that to, for parents to stay away from that. Okay? Now, the love that I have for, let's say, if I were to have kids, if I have kids, won't be, you know, just brother love. You know, I don't know, I'm not a mother, but, but when someone is pregnant, I'm hearing that the mother have a better closer bond than the father would have because he was with the baby for at least eight months. Is that true for those who have kids? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Another scripture that I found interesting, which I actually found pretty kind of funny, Proverbs 23 verse 14. Thou shalt not with God and shalt not One at a time. I'm, I'm happy though, but let's, let's have reverence. Let's, let's pick a, a, a girl. Proverbs 23 verse 14. All right, so it's basically saying to whoop your kids, but <laughs> but with love. In other words, the only reason why you are beating your kids is so that they can be better, not to hurt them. And that's why I believe in. That's why I don't believe in hitting kids with my hands because. I don't want my hands, I don't want my kids to see me as a weapon, a weapon. That's why it's specific to say to whip your kid with a rod, or in our term would be a belt. Okay? But there should be love and um, um and family. We're gonna get to that in a second too. Let's continue. So I'm passing forward. Eros is the physical, sensual intimacy between a husband and wife. It expressed sexually romantic. Attraction. Let's go to Proverbs 5, verse 18 through 19. Guys, guys, please. Let me let me call you out. 
So Proverbs 5, verse 18 through 19. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead. You, you, you. Okay, so we kind of had a feeling what you was um, love is, right? Basically between a husband and wife, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say I want to roast love with my with my homeboy. That would be pretty, you know, not good. <laughs> Suspect, they would say, right? So you have to become what type of love you get to other people. Okay, so this is Eros love. Now. What about agape, huh? It sells a selfless, sacrificial, and conditional love. It is the highest of the four types of love in the Bible. A simple way to summarize God, agape is God, divine love. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 43 to 44. Matthew 5, verse 43 to 44. Go ahead, sir. Yea, have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemies. Well, I say to you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you, and that makes you Okay, thank you. Now, well, did we state that how we can get this type of love to truly love someone? Only through God. Only through God. Now, honestly, let's be honest. Who love our enemies? If you, if you raise your hand up, that's good. All right, that's one, two. Now, is it, is it possible for the carnal body, for us, a, a flesh, to love our enemies? Is it possible? It is not possible. It is natural, actually. Forgive me for this. A long time ago, I read a quote from the Satanic Bible. Yes, there's a Bible called Satanic. There was a quote about saying to love your friends and to hate your enemies. And for some people, it will make sense. This is my enemy. I should hate the person, right? But the scripture said to love your enemies. Now, how does that look like, right? Let's go to 1 John 3 verse 18, and I'm going to get into, into that. 1 John 3 verse 18. I need someone else on this side. Go ahead. <laughs> First John 3 verse 18. Not John 3 verse 18. You don't got it? That's fine. First John 3. No one in this side got it? My young adults? Alright, go ahead. That's fine. That's, that's fine. But, um. Uh, that was it? Yeah, it says, my, my little children, let us not love in word. Okay, yes, that is it. Tongue, but in deed and in truth. Okay. So, imagine a man, a man came to go, hey, I love you, but yet he's always cheating on her. Does that person truly love her? No. What must he do? He must wash. He must show it by his action. And we're going we're gonna to describe what kind of action that. Um, we must have to have the true love of God. So, in order for us to have this agape love, we must have a relationship with who? God. We must know who? God. So to know God is to know His what? Word. His word. To, to, to know His? I'm looking for the C word. Character. character. There we go. We must, the only one, the way to know someone, you have to know their character. Before you become married to the person, I would hope that you want this person's character. Amen? Amen. Alright. Now, I'm going to do a little quiz before I go into depth into this. Next. Alright. Go ahead. Okay, stop right there. It's family love, the bond among mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, sisters, and brothers. What is that? Torch. Besides, I'm ready. Arrow. Arrow. 
Y'all forgot already? Alright, put the answer up. Storage, guys, storage. What's the next one? The next one means close friendship, brother love, and grief. Okay, um, process of elimination, so that, that, that hope you got it. That's good. Next one is physical, central, intimacy between the husband and wife. Alright, you guys got it, you guys got it. And next one is adopted. Okay. Alright, so please record this in your frontal lobe, okay? Now, let's go, let's go to the next slide. Now, what does philia look like without the unconditional love? There's some friendship that's toxic, that's very toxic. There's some friends that will talk behind people back. Who can relate? Only few, that's fine. Friendship that is based on just gossiping. I know a lot of friendship, that's all they do is gossip, sadly. <laughs> friendship that doesn't even last, right? Friends taking advantage of you, okay? So without this unconditional between friendship, those things can happen and it can take a toll on you. Gossiping, talk behind on someone's back. And if you are in this friendship, I'm calling, I'm asking you to please get out of it. Because it can actually bring your spiritual um, walk down, amen? amen? What's the next one? Storage. I don't know if you guys remember this guy from Dr. Phil. You guys remember this guy? He actually stopped his mother on live television. He told his mom to be quiet and let me finish talking. So this is this is the world we live in. Without storage, without a doubt, their parents taking advantage of the kids and the other around kids taking advantage of their parents. Verbally and physical abuse, abusing each other. There's some parents that abuse their kids, and there's some kids that abuse their parents, unfortunately. And children may not live long. Now, what do I mean by that? Remember where we read, remember where we read um, um, Exodus 20, verse 12? Honor your father and mother so that they may live longer, right? Okay. So let's go to Proverbs 23, verses 13 to 14, right, real quick. Proverbs 23, verses 13 to 14. Go ahead. Withhold not worship from the child. For if thou beest him with the God, he shall not die. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be him with the God, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Now, you know, a lot of people read this verse and they say, okay, I'm going to whoop my child. We talked about it. I'm going to my child because that's what the Bible says. Even some a master whooped the state when it comes to that, you know? But we must be careful with how we use this verse. The, the whooping should always be the last, last, last resort. Yeah. Talk with your children if they're doing wrong. Sit with them. Conference them with them. Counsel them so that they can be the man or woman of God that they should be. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Eagles without agape. Do you guys believe that there's a lot of domestic abuse between relationships? Yes. Man and woman um, deal with domestic abuse. Adultery. Who, who, who believes that there's a lot of adultery going on in a relationship? Yes. Fornication. <laughs> relationship based on just physical attraction. People marry someone just based on just physical attraction. Is that a good thing? No. Obviously you shouldn't be physically attracted to a person. But to just based on just that, that is a problem. That is a problem. Unhappy or may end up in divorce. When we read that only less than 1% of marriages are unhappy. Are happy, I meant to say. Less than 1% of marriages are happy, which means 99% and more are unhappy. So how do you find this person that, you know, that we want to spend the rest of Remember. When you marry someone, you're going to spend the rest of your life with that person, I would hope. So should we be careful and be cautious who we marry? Yes. I've seen a couple people that suffer because they did not take the time or they did not allow God to help them. There's this quote I got from someone, I'm going to steal it from him. The man and the woman should be so lost in God that they would have to go to God and able to find him or her. Ooh, that's not me, right? right? <laughs> Both parties should be lost in God. They should be 
in God. God should choose that person for you. And you know, a lot of men in divorce because they don't have that unconditional love that they should have between each other. The love is conditional. What does that even mean? I love someone because you, you, you give me gifts maybe. I love someone because you do good to me. But the minute there's a flaw, they separate and they separate from that person. Is that the love that God wants to bestow upon us? No. No, it's not. God wants to have this godly love. If you see this, look, look at this guy in the last picture with the person, and yet he's holding the other person's hand. Obviously, that's a, um, um, a script um, photo, but mentally, that's how people think. Do you guys know if you look upon a woman, lustfully, that's not your wife. You have committed adultery? Yes. You guys know that? Yeah. The Bible says so. And you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of females believe that that's how men are, and they deal with it. Every time women pass by, guys usually have this neck problem. <laughs> you know the neck issue I'm talking about? Like they can't, you know. Now don't get me wrong. If you look at the first time, that is not your fault. But if you choose, make the decision to look again, then, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not a good thing. So if you have a neck problem, please go to a physical therapy to help you. And that physical therapist is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to the next one. Now, let's see the example of Jesus. Jesus forgave them despite of the mockery. He, they mocked Jesus Christ, and yet he still forgave them. Luke 23, verse 34 said, Jesus still forgave them even when they killed him. Let's go there. Luke 23, verse 34. I'm going to read it. I just want us to read this one. Luke 23, verse 34. Can you read it? Yes. Then Jesus said, oh, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So where was he when Jesus, when Jesus said that? He was at the cross. Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. The people that killed him, he asked the Father to please forgive them. Is it possible to even have this type of love? It's mind-blowing. And Jesus healed an ear despite of their arrest. Do you guys remember that part? Yep. Yeah. Jesus said, let's go to that verse real quick. Luke 22, verse 49, 51. Luke 22, verses 49 through 51. Someone else can read that? Someone in the side? Come on. Young adults, amen. All right, tough crowd. All right, left side. All right, I will have the honor to please read that for me. Luke 22, verses 49 through 51. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall with smite with the sword. And one of them smocked the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. So let's give this for example. Let's say a cop, you know, were arrested because you were black, right? That doesn't matter, right? All right. And someone came out and they cut his ear. Would you wish that? Would you be happy about it? Yeah. More than half said yes. But this is exactly what, what was going on with God. God had the power to, if you had the power to heal the cop ear, would you have healed it? No. Now, of course not, because we are dealing with a fleshy love that doesn't go, bring us nowhere. But unless we have that un, remember, unconditional love, Despite, we would have held that ear. Amen? Amen? We must pray. And you know, the only reason why we don't have that love too is because some of us don't even want it. Like, I want to hate my enemies because they did me wrong. <laughs> but we must make that leap and make that decision. Lord, I want to have that love so that I can end up loving my enemies. Amen. And that's the only way we're going to make it to heaven, guys. The only way to have that unconditional love. Now, we're going to go to the next line. Now what would they call this? Jumping. Jumping, right? Not, not, not jumping. They're jumping somebody, right? I hope no one has to do with that. And I hope no one was the one that's doing the jumping, okay? Now, Jesus had to deal with that. Not exactly like, you know, actually, you don't, we don't know. <laughs> it actually was worse. <laughs> it was actually worse what Jesus had to, uh, went through. Now, let's just say this. Let's just say your friend, your best friend is getting jumped. And you have your own crew here ready 
to, you know, what, what would you do with your friends? Or even myself? Go and, you know, help and whatever. That I found it just last week that Jesus, I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to read this quote. This is very interesting. Let's go to the next slide. Now, shh, next slide. Now read, now please, shh, listen carefully. This is very interesting. The multitude was clamorous for the blood of Jesus. Now this is talking about the angels. All right? You're going to find this in early writings, page 170. The, cruel, the cruelly scorched him and put upon him an old purple kindly robe and bound his sacred head with crown of thorns. So they're mocking him. They're mocking Jesus. They're putting a purple robe and a, a, and a, and a um, thorn crown. They put a weed into his, his hand and bowed to him and bowed to him. They, they're mocking him, right? They're mocking Jesus and, mock, and mockingly saluted him. Hell, king of the Jews. They then took the weed from his hand and smote him with it upon the head, causing the thorns to penetrate his temples, right? Sending the blood trickling down his face and beard. So let's imagine that for a second. They're mocking him, put him thorn pot, he's bleeding to death, basically. Next slide. It was difficult for the angels to endure the sight. So the angels are in heaven, right? And it is difficult for them to endure it. They would have delivered Jesus. But the commanding angels forbade them, saying that it was a great ransom that was to be paid for man. But it would be completed and it would cause the death of him who had the power of death. Jesus knew that angels were witnessing the scene of his humiliation. The weakest angels could have caused that mocking throng to fall powerless and could have delivered Jesus. He knew that if he would desire it of his father, angels would instantly release him. But it was necessary that should suffer the violence of wicked men in order to carry out the plan of salvation. The other side, Jesus stood meek and humble before the infuriated multitude. While they offered him the violence abuse, they spit in his face, that face from which they will one day desire to hide, which will give light to the seed of God and shine brighter than the sun. Christ did not cast upon the offenders an angry look. They covered his head with an old garment, blindfolding him, and then struck him with the face and cried out, Prophecy, who is it that smote thee? There was commoting among the angels. They would have rescued him instantly, but the commanding angels restrained them. So what is going on here? Abuse. And God's homeboys, which are the angels, are ready to shut everything down. Ready to rescue him. But the commanding angels, even Jesus, even Jesus said, because he had to finish his mission. And to in that unconditioned love, he had for the people that actually beat him. Would you have that unconditioned love for the person that is doing you wrong? Is it possible to have that power? If you ask, you shall receive. Only if we ask, God can give it to us. But we must choose to ask if we must want it. Are you guys with me? Yes, sir. Now, there's something interesting. We're almost done. Next slide. We're almost done. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read this. Ezekiel 28 verse 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Who is, that, who is this talking about? Satan was the anointed cherub. Satan was an angel, okay, if you didn't know. And I said thee so, that was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of what? Fire. So Satan was walking in the stones of fire which was in heaven. So the heaven ground was made of stones of what? Fire. Let's keep that in mind. Next verse. Exodus 24, verse 6 through 8 to say, And the glory of the Lord abode upon the Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days and seven days. He called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a divine what? The divine fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So we see here that Satan was walking in the midst of stones of fire, and in the mountain, in the Moses' time, God was like a consuming fire. When Moses talked to the burning bush, what 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 was it? What was was it? What what was made of? Fire. 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 Okay, let's keep that in mind. Next slide. Psalm of Solomon eight verse six says, "Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death." Love is strong as what? Yes. Jealousy is poor as the grave. The coals that are coals of fire, which had most 
feminine flame, which means that God love is equivalent to a supernatural fire. Are you guys with me so far? So when someone says you're in fire for Christ, you know what that means now. All right? In other words, how can we have this fire in our hearts? In other words, how can we have this love in our heart? Matthew 3 verse 7 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost and with fire. So when we baptize, we have the Holy Spirit, which is fire. Holy Spirit and fire. Now, and, and we must keep that relationship with God in order for us to have that burning fire in our hearts. Okay? Now, here's the interesting verse. We're almost done. Isaiah 32, verse 43 says, The sinners and Zions are afraid. Faithful has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? Now, who will dwell with the everlasting burning, guys? Let's all save. Eric. <laughs> who will burn forever? The people that fall the tribulation, he says, saying, who else? Who will have this everlasting burden? Let's see, let's see what the next verse says. 15. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. I don't think that's Satan. And he that despiteth the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hand from holding a bride, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eye from seeing evil. So I'm going to ask you again. Who will have this everlasting burden? God's people. Now, a lot of people may be confused. They say, I thought the people that are my sister are supposed to be burned forever, right? They are going to be burned. But we're going to see what's, what's, what, we're going to see what, what's going on. Stay right there. Don't go back to back. Stay right there. Now, I'm going to go into review. Us Christians, you never should know this. When Jesus come, when Jesus come, what happens? What? What will happen to the people that are dead in Christ? They will rise up. What will happen to the people that are alive in Christ? So the people that are dead and alive will caught up with God into heaven, all right? What will happen to the dead? The dead in Christ. What will happen to the people that are alive, that are alive and are not in Christ? No. Now listen, I'm talking about when Jesus just come, the second coming. The dead, the dead in Christ shall rise. The living in Christ, they will transform to make with the dead of Christ and will in Jesus. While those who are alive, those who are alive who do not believe in Jesus, they're going to fall down in there. But some of the people who did not who do not believe in Jesus, but those who killed Jesus, they will come back to life just to see him shortly. Because Jesus said, even those who pierce him will shall see him. Okay. Those who well, come back well, to life point. to see Jesus, and then they will drop dead again. He was right. So I'm gonna summarize it in more depth. When Jesus comes, the people that are alive and the people that are dead in Christ will rise into heaven. How long will they be in heaven for? What, what, what will be going on during the thousand years? There will be the rejoicing and there will be judging the people that are wicked. In other words, they're going to find out why is the press, why is my sister here is not making it to heaven? So this was going to be going on. We're going to find out why and we see how many times God have tried to save that person so many times and we see that God was just. This is what's going to happen during the thousand years or one of the things. After the thousand years has passed, what happens? The wicked, the new Jerusalem, the battle of our heaven. Now, during the thousand years, are the people that are dead and that are in Christ, are they dead? Yes. yes. So after the thousand years had expired, what would happen? They will rise. They will rise. They will rise up. They will rise. And then the new Jerusalem will come down and will burn them. All right? But there's a love story into that. So this is a summary. There's a love story into that. Okay? And if you want to listen to a sermon called I Remind You Have a Better um, 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 Picture on that. Now, we read in Isaiah 33 that we're going to burn forever.
Now, imagine this. When Moses was talking to God, what did he talk in front of his face? Yes. In the mountain. What did he see? His what? His back. Why did he, God didn't want him to see his face? It would have been consumed. Okay. Let's just say I were to walk into a fire. Would I be consumed? Yes. Now, when we shot at Meshach and Abednego? Yes. When they went to a tenfold fire? What happened? Did they get burned? Were they consumed? No. Okay. Now listen to this. The whole goal of a Christian is to be fireproof. What do I mean by that? Amen. Now remember when we mentioned that Satan was walking in the midst of what? Fire. So in other words, and when we're in the mind, we see that God loves us like a fire. So in other words, there's fire all around heaven. Our goal is to be fireproof. And how do you become fireproof? Matthew verse 7 says, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In order for us to withstand heaven, we must have God's love, which is fire, so that we can be able to talk to him face to face. Now, imagine if God went to bring someone that was not going to have the love of God into heaven. What would happen? They would burn, or maybe they would hide somewhere because they, they would actually suffer. So God's actually doing them a favor. Are you guys with me so far? God's actually doing them a favor. They will suffer. And they want to they have the love of the presence of the one that they had before because they was never converted. Now, when would their room was done? When, when would there be tears and, and crying? You know, when would that end? Do you guys know that I believe, this is my personal assumption or uh, opinion, I believe during the thousand years, people will be in sorrow, they'll be sad. I believe that. Because it didn't say that until the thousand had expired that they'll be rejoicing happy. Because this, this is when they're going to find out my loved one didn't make it. My wife didn't make it. My friends didn't make it. My father and mother didn't make it. There's nothing to be happy about it. Although you're happy that you know, you're here, but you would wish that they'll be here with you. Yep. Right? Yep. Now, God made us from the beginning and he knows how many hair we have in our scalp. Amen? Amen. He loves us very much and he will never stop loving us. Do you guys know that even the people that he burned, he's still going to love them? Yes. Now imagine, I'm from the army and I'm about to leave for two years. Imagine my, my wife or my friends just say, okay, bye, see you later. Wouldn't that be off? Yeah. What would my wife do? He will hug me, like kiss me, or my friends will be like, oh man, let's pray with you. They will, they will give you the last. It's as if they're not gonna, they're never going to see you again. And this is what God is going to do to the wicked. Now listen. Just listen carefully. A lot of people think that God is unjust and effect that he's going to burn them. Now, when the new Jerusalem come down, it's going to be like a fire, right? Mm -hmm. So there won't be no room on earth for the people that are in the earth. Remember, God wants to save every last one of us. Everyone. There's not one person. He even wants to save Satan at one point of time. God wants to save every last one of us. So, our, so God is basically telling the wicked a last goodbye. Are you guys with me? And you know, I remind you um, say clearly, call it God's one last hug. Imagine if you were to hug God and you didn't have the fire, what would happen? In other words, when God see them, I mean, he's going to be sad, he's going to be crying. Because this is the people that he actually made that he wants to spend a life with. And because they didn't make the decision, God can give them that one last goodbye. That one last hug God can give to them. And because they did not have the fire within them, because there was not fire pools, what would happen? They would be consumed. And that would be the end of wicked forever. And then, when they come down, um, everyone will live happily ever after. Now, what is the church um, um, represent of? The bride, amen? Yep. And God is represent of the bride's groom. In Revelation 19, you see that the, bri the bride's groom go ahead and get um, his, his church. Does a honeymoon last forever? No. So, 
what would you compare the honeymoon to when it comes to the whole a thousand years and the, and the New Jerusalem? When Jesus come get them, the honeymoon will basically be the thousand years that's been in heaven. Mm -hmm. After the honeymoon, you go to your new home, which is the new Jerusalem. And unfortunately, because they did not have the fire that they had, they will be consumed. God's goal is for us to be fireproof that we can withstand God's love. In order for us to live with Christ, we must have the same unconditional love, not any type of kind of love where it's conditional, but an unconditional love that God wants to bestow us.